Hello and welcome to Show of the Week. I'm Jane, and I'm Andy. This week, I've been looking at some of the more fun, non-lethal finishing moves in Mortal Kombat history. <laughs> Non-lethal. It's a heroic brutality, Jane. It'll be fine. You think that's bad? You should see Cassie Cage's Mortal Kombat X fatality. She sticks bubble gum in your brain hole. Jeez, I think you're going to need something relaxing after all that. What do you suggest? Well. How about Ori in the Blind Forest, which is out this week on Xbox One? It's a puzzle platformer that casts you as Ori, a forest spirit who is adopted by what looks like an obese cat in a Jason Voorhees mask. Then one day, Cat Jason is taken away and Ori is forced to explore the forest on his own. When you start out, Ori is pretty defenceless and can only jump. As you progress through the game, you unlock new abilities which let you explore the other parts of the world that were previously inaccessible. Sort of like in Metroid and in Castlevania. Someone should really come up with a word for that. Castleroid? These abilities are initially fairly tame, such as the ability to wall jump or glide, but later upgrades give you power over the direction of gravity, leading to mind-bending, twitchy platforming puzzles that even the most seasoned XBLA aficionado will find challenging. It's classic trial and error platforming. Die, learn the pattern and die again. Satisfying but not frustrating since every attempt gets you closer to your goal. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Alright, a bit frustrating. Luckily, the game is generous with its checkpointing in that you do the checkpointing yourself. You can create a soul link at any time, which you'll return to if you die. However, you draw on a limited store of energy to create soul links, and it's this energy you also use for heavy attacks that are handy against bigger enemies, so you'll need to decide how best to allocate your resources. As you will have noticed from the gameplay over which I've been talking, Ori in the Blind Forest looks gorgeous, with beautiful animation backed up by lush, expansive sound design and a full orchestral score. It manages to be soothing while being taxing, just the thing you need to calm down after all that ultraviolence you've been at, Andy. Hardly anyone gets their ribcage punched out in this. I mean, unless it takes a majorly dark turn towards the end. That already looks like bad news if you ask me. You've got to keep your eyes on the quiet ones. You feeling better now? Oh yeah, much. It's very relaxing. Sort of reminds me of that really good run of Summers of Arcade we had, you know, with like Braid and Limbo and Super Meat Boy. Yeah, what are those guys up to now? That's an excellent question, Andy, because it's not like we've seen Ultra Meat Boy 2 Turbo Edition or Limbo 2 Limbo Harder on Xbox, have we? But these guys aren't just sitting around counting their money in some glamorous Hollywood pad, eating endless pick and mix and throwing parties attended by Selena Gomez, which, to be fair Notch, is exactly what we'd be doing. Here's what the teams behind five titans of XBLA that aren't Minecraft are up to now. I really don't know what I'm going to do to follow up after all those explosions, but you know, we'll see what happens. Gaming's favourite combination of a giant brain balanced atop razor-sharp cheekbones, Jonathan Blow of Braid fame has forsaken Xbox, at least for the time being. His upcoming game, The Witness, is a PlayStation 4 exclusive at launch, though we'd be surprised if it doesn't eventually slink onto Xbox One, reeking of Sony, mumbling some excuse about missing the last bus to the Xbox store. It's a puzzle game that is based around epiphany, basically that moment in a puzzle game where you go from feeling really, really stupid to really, really clever. He describes The Witness as taking that aha substance and distilling it. But in The Witness, we take this aha substance and distill it into a concentrated form. We don't know what that means exactly, Jonathan, but we hope it involves a take on me sing-along. We're guessing that Team Meat, the guys behind addictive old-school platformer Super Meat Boy, started with the name of their next game and worked backwards from there. Mugenix is apparently a cat breeding simulator, which we'd say was pretty random, but Pro Lumberjack Simulator 2016 was just announced and now we don't know what to believe. Apparently Mugenix is currently on hold while they finish off a mobile version of Super Meat Boy called Super Meat Boy Forever. Team Meat has promised they'll get right back on it once the mobile game's done and dusted. Based on what we've seen so far though, we're not entirely convinced about Mugenic's credentials as a simulator. It seems based on a fundamental misunderstanding of how cats procreate. Look, team meets, when a mummy cat and a daddy cat love each other very much, 
You might remember Playdead from Enigmatic Platformer starring a small boy Limbo. Well, get ready for an Enigmatic Platformer starring a small boy, because Inside is coming to your Xbox One. Inside? Xbox? It'll never catch on. There's not much in the way of concrete details, but Inside's trailer suggests the goal will be attempting to move undetected through an Orwellian surveillance state, and by Playdead standards, it's positively vibrant. Look, I very nearly saw a colour there. Clay Entertainment, who made XBLA Classics, N+, Mark of the Ninja and Shank do an excellent line in stylish downloadable games. Their next project, Invisible Ink, get it? is no less swish with its slinky spies and clean isometric level layouts. It's turn-based stealth with the emphasis very much on the stealth. You'll be infiltrating facilities and fiddling with equipment to turn it against your enemies. And you'll want to avoid getting into combat if you can help it because that trench coat, trilby and turtleneck combination you insist on wearing offers very little protection at all. Invisible Ink looks great and is gaining quite a fan base on Steam Early Access. We're still smarting over Don't Starve's No Show on Xbox, Clay. Don't hold out on us with this one as well. Fruit Ninja Connect was pretty popular on Xbox Live Arcade, right? Wonder what bold, innovative new game concept developer Halfbrick is working on. Oh, Fruit Ninja Connect 2, out on the 18th of March. Hey, I bought an Xbox One launch console with Connect. I will take anything I can get. Now it's time to see what you've written in the comments and on fortune cards Andy got from the Zoltar machine by the pier. Check it, you will die a hideous, gruesome death. That's terrible. No, Mike, in these cases, a death just means like the closing of one chapter of a life and beginning a new... And yeah, a new... but there's a drawing and everything. So much blood. First up, your comments on last week's show in which we looked at scream rides and the deadliest fairground rides in games. It's hard to believe anyone takes their kids to an amusement park where this is the sort of thing they're expected to ride. Clearly a connoisseur of theme park rides that also murder you, Arsenal RSL says, How on earth can you forget the carousel from the evil within? It's literally the only one that actively tries to kill you. Why can't anyone just make a nice video game theme park with animatronics and costumed characters and all that stuff? You mean like the one in Five Nights at Freddy 3 which Kurum Kid 1999 points out is full of safety hazards from possessed robot animals to fires to not having enough oxygen and hallucinating old robot animals. I think they needed a priest and or a medium rather than a random nut job. Not exactly what I meant, no. Finally, on the subject of my electric dropkick experiments, the Rupert Litterbin says, You could say that Mike's shoes are positively shocking, eh? No? Okay, I'll wear the dunce hat. How many sign? Next up, your comments on our playthrough of the Shadow of Mordor DLC in which we filled the One Ring power meter to activate One Ring mode, much as Frodo would go on to do thousands of years later in his own jewelry-based adventure. Faith into yeah. it, hey, so. You don't need to leap of faith into anything because you're sort of oh, magical. Oh, because you're Yeah, I'm Kalembrimbor. Which uh, means the Dreamweaver in Elvish. <laughs> <laughs> it does not. Everyone's a critic, but more specifically Brian Mulhair's a critic, saying, You guys are so bad at this, you make Jane look good at Halo. Also, you suck at Halo. Someone should really let her know. Dean Demetria, meanwhile, knows potential when he sees it, saying, If only the Kinect could actually detect Jane saying, Don't see me, we'd be saying the same thing for Alien Isolation. Don't see me, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. Yeah, there we go. I find shouting, Don't see me, at people <laughs> is very effective. <laughs> Their vision's based on how loudly you shout, don't see me at them. Finally, Zach S comments, Love the video, but I hope I'm not the only one extremely annoyed by them all adding an extra M to Kalebrim... 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 Celery ball? Kalima! We're never going to get this right. Finally this week, your comments on this video about the times video games got space really, really right. Much like Godzilla, space is big, beautiful and indifferent to human life. It doesn't want to kill you, but it will. On the subject of space's silence, Dragonius Maximus submits, In the New Order, there's a space sequence that's just really perfect in the no sound category. Could probably hear more if he wasn't breathing so loudly. Jackson, meanwhile, notes, Is it just me or did Jane seem a bit spaced out in this video? No, oh, I'll go now. You're lucky the pun idiot sign's already in use, Jax. Lastly, Mikhail Irwan writes to say, So, Andy gets angry when there is historical inaccuracy. Jane gets angry when there is space inaccuracy. So what gets Mike pissed? Check it out. Mike, red cars go faster. Sir, you go too far. All right, I apologize. I'm wheelie. Sorry. That's it for Show of the Week, but according to the parts of this Zoltar fortune that aren't about my death, today would be an excellent day for you to press the like button. Don't want to argue with that guy. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Okay, do you want to go for some lunch now? Yeah, you go on ahead. I've just figured out how to do fatalities in Ori in the Blind Forest. Oh, sick! Okay.